All right, hello. Let's take a look at uh, problem four, or last problem from chapter one. And so the goal in problem four is um, you know, to again think from a think about molecules, right? So we know that in a vapor phase, the molecules are going to be much further apart than in a liquid phase. And so what we want to do here in, in problem four is to try and you know get an order of magnitude estimate of how far apart are the molecules in a liquid and vapor to kind of uh, help you put this into uh, context. And so you're asked to, uh, in A, estimate the mean distance between water molecules and liquid water. And we're told that for simplicity, we can assume the molecules sit on a regular square lattice. And then in B, you're going to repeat for uh, steam, uh, where you're given the density of, of steam. Uh, report in angstrom. So angstrom is just a unit of molecular um, distance where an angstrom is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So an angstrom will just give us the ability uh, to not have to use scientific notation uh, in reporting our answer. All right, so I'm going to try my very best to, to draw a lattice and get you an idea of what's going on. I, I won't be able to draw, or I'm not going to take the time to draw all of it. Um, and we'll, we'll set up the problems and, and give you an idea of, of how to solve it. Uh, but especially after doing problem one and two, where we went through the labor of, of unit conversion, I'll leave a lot of that um, up to you. Okay, but the idea is a uh, simple cubic lattice. All right, so if I attempt to draw a cube, okay, here's my attempt to draw a 3D cube where the distance or length of each one of these edges is, is L, right? So the volume of that cube is, is L. So now the idea of a cubic lattice would be I have a water molecule at each one of these corners. Okay. And then this would be replicated out in, in all dimensions. Um, so if I just think of about one replication to, to the right, okay. So there's eight atoms in, in this um, cube, if you will. So if I were to replicate this out, Okay, I would have such. So I'd add four more atoms. Okay, again, all of these edges are the same um, and of length uh, four. Okay, and so we would replicate this out in all dimensions. And so then the question is, well, what's you know the space occupied you know by each um, molecule? Well, if I were to replicate this out in in all dimensions, um, you know I would you know draw you know let's see let's see if I can do it in this dimension so looking at a replication okay so this is going to be of length uh, L over 2 so the bisection of that edge length L over 2 so L over 2 plus L over 2 is, is L right so within you know a atom on one of those corners I can draw in a primitive cell that's going to have its own edge length of, of L which gives me you know how am I trying to picture this? So, you know, the way I picture molecules in a liquid is it's, you know, I have a molecule in a liquid, then I've got kind of some buffer region around it, right? And each molecule has its own, you know, buffer region, okay? So if all those molecules are exactly the same with the same buffer region, and so you've got a molecule buffer region, molecule buffer region, the distance between those two is, you know, the sum of those two, you know, buffer regions, <laughs> um, and so, you know, the distance between these two molecules is L over 2, which is the sum of those two, you know, buffer regions, if you will. Okay, so, you know, sorry if I'm doing a very poor job of explaining this, all right? But, you know, I could picture then, you know, kind of a, a, a cube of edge length L right around that central cell, which is kind of that space occupied by that molecule, right? And each of those atoms is going to have that same space, um, if you will. So that the total volume, okay, so that, you know, my volume on a per molecule, so volume per molecule, okay, is L cubed, which would be the volume of that box, okay, um, or, you know, if it, you know, total volume for N molecules, right, is going to be equal to N times L cubed, okay. 
So the, the total volume occupied per molecule is, is L cubed. Okay. And so, you know, what we're trying to, to estimate is what's L. Okay. Um, so how are we going to do that? So in B, we're explicitly given the density. Okay. In A, we could look it up in the steam tables um, or just take our reference point for water at 25 degrees C in one bar and, and take the density to be one gram per centimeter cubed. Right. So in A, we just say that rho is one gram per centimeter cubed. Okay, so if I'm given a density in grams per centimeter cube, how am I going to get an estimate of the interaction distance? Okay, well, for given density, the idea is that density is equal to mass over volume. Okay, um, and if I want to think on a, a per molecule basis, I can. Um, and so I need the mass of a molecule of water. Um, divided by L cubed, which would be the space occupied per molecule, um, M over L cubed is equal to uh, density. All right, easier said than done. So rho, again, is going to be estimated as M over L cubed. Okay, uh, L cubed is what I'm trying to solve for. Okay, so before I, I directly solve for L, okay, mass is the mass of a uh, molecule of water. Remember before we said, okay, if I were to look up the molecular weight of water, molecular weight is going to have units of grams per mole, right? In this case, it's 18 grams per mole. Um, and then I know my friend Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Avogadro's number has units of inverse moles, right? It tells us how many molecules are equal to a mole. So my molecular weight is um, a mole of water is equal to this many grams, Okay, and Avogadro tells us how many molecules are in a mole. So if I want to know the mass per molecule, well, that's going to be my molecular weight, which is the mass per mole, divided by N Avogadro, which tells me how many molecules are in a mole. Okay, so rho then is the mass of a molecule over length cubed, and then in terms of quantities that I know, that'll be the molecular weight divided by N Avogadro, okay, divided by L cubed. Okay, so L is what I'm interested in. So L cubed will be um, molecular weight divided by N Avo over rho. So L is equal to molecular weight divided by N Avo over rho to the one third power. Okay, and if I have the molecular weight of water um, 18 um, grams per mole. Uh, I have an uh, uh, Avogadro, and then I have density in terms of um, grams per uh, centimeter cubed. Uh, I'm going to get L in terms of centimeters, and then I'll just be a matter of converting centimeters to um, angstroms. Okay, so for A, density of water, I'll plug in one gram per centimeter cubed. B, so if, you know, density of liquid water is one gram per centimeter cubed. Density of um, uh, steam at 200 degrees C in one bar is, you know, 4.6 times 10 to the negative four. Um, so four orders of magnitude uh, smaller. Um, and so you'll plug those two values in for for density. Uh, get an estimate of L then in, in centimeters, which you'll then convert to angstroms. Um, so one angstrom is one times 10 to the negative 10 meters. So one angstrom is one times 10 to the negative eight uh, centimeters. So give it a go. Uh, get a numerical estimate of the distance between water molecules in liquid and vapor phase. Um, again, you should find that the molecules in the vapor are much further than um, the molecules in the liquid. And hopefully this helps put it into context for you. Any questions? Let me know.